welcome to Impact Church. For service times, upcoming events, and video podcasts, please visit our website, www.impactchurchohio.com. All right, so I'm super excited about tonight because I really believe that um, that there's going to be something that happens. Um, specifically, I think freedom is going to happen in each one of our lives um, in a different way than, than we've ever experienced. And so um, we're going to be uh, looking at Matthew chapter 18, uh, verse 21. And we're going to go all the way through 35. Then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times, Peter says. But Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, now now Jesus goes and tells this parable. He says, therefore, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. And when he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and his children and all that he had and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. Please just have patience with me. And out of pity or or other translations, I like the way they phrase it. They say out of compassion for him, the, the master of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. But when that same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him, he began to choke him, saying, pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. He refused and went and put him in prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw that he had taken place, what had taken place, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me, and should should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in anger his master delivered him, to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. Father, we thank you for your word, God. We thank you, Lord, that, that your word has power, God, that, that nothing else in this world uh, has power like your word, God. We thank you that your word is life, that there's freedom in your word, that there's grace in your word, that there's power and that there's forgiveness that comes from your word. And God, we pray that you would bless it today. God, we pray that you would help us to really see what you are talking about as you speak, God, because we know that you know all things, God. And so, Holy Spirit, we pray that you would do what it is only you can do. In Jesus' name, amen. That was a question I I had while I was reading that. Um, Is it possible to be forgiven by Jesus but not show forgiveness to others. And so I got to thinking about that. And I said, what does the Bible have to say about that? Uh, And so a little bit before here in Matthew, uh, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says something in Matthew chapter 6, in verse 9, a very familiar passage. It's called the Lord's Prayer. So it says this, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And here's the key part here. It says, for if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you don't, Forgive others their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive you of your trespasses. And so, as I read that verse, it really answered my question spot on. It was like very specific. You ever have a question, um, but you can't quite seem to find a specific answer in the Bible for it? You know, we have all these questions, you know. Um, and uh, that, this was one of those questions, but I, I found that specific answer. And it was like, wow. Like, that was really direct. You know, it was like cut and dry. 
right to the bone, uh, right on point. And um, so basically what I want to tell you tonight is, is we have to begin to change our mindset and the way that we, uh, the way that we think and the way that we um, forgive and the way that we view forgiveness. Really, what Jesus said in this passage is he's, he's saying you have to forgive because your forgiveness depends on it. That's deep, isn't it? What if we started to <coughs> change our mindset? And what if we started to actually <coughs> forgive um, because we know that our forgiveness depends on it? I'd start forgiving a lot more people. How about you? <laughs> I'd start. Uh, I'd start looking for people to forgive, man. I might even purposely, you know, um, have somebody do me wrong just so that I can forgive them, just so I'm guaranteed that I get forgiveness from Jesus, right? I mean, like, I I'm getting serious about this, this thing we call forgiveness. Here's what I know about forgiveness. Um, what, what, what forgiveness does, as is, is we see in the Bible, is, uh, is it allows freedom to come. See, when you're forgiven, uh, when you're forgiven uh, and forgiveness flows, then freedom comes. So when you have freedom, you know, how many know when you have freedom, like all of a sudden you can start to do anything you want, right? You know, like if we look back in the, the, old, the old times, if you were a slave, you know, you weren't free. You had to go by whatever your master said. You couldn't just go for a walk in the park. You know, you couldn't just go to Mitchell's ice cream to get a hot fudge sundae with uh, extra pecans, you know? You, uh, you didn't have that freedom. You had to do whatever it is that your master told you to do. Of course, unless you had a good master, uh, uh, you know, a graceful master. But uh, we see here that, you know, that, that in this passage that the servant who owed the other servant money, he, he, wasn't, he wasn't graceful about that at all. Um, but I'm here to tell you today that we serve a, a graceful God. I'm, to, I'm here to tell you that, that Jesus is, um, is willing to forgive us our trespasses. He, he's, he's willing to show us grace. And, and, and one thing that I've really, uh, that I've really learned is that, um, that, that we've been given grace to give grace. We've been given grace to give grace. You know, God didn't just uh, give us grace so that we could feel good about ourselves, so that we could have freedom and, and you know, float in the air and, and walk on the clouds. You know, he, he's given us freedom and, and he's given us grace and forgiveness so that we could actually go out and, and give that very same grace, give that very same forgiveness out to other people. So, uh, you know, I don't know about you, but that's the kind of lifestyle I want to live. But, but how many know that's not an easy lifestyle? It's, it's challenging. It's difficult, right? Like I was saying in this passage, the, the servant owed the master or, or the king, he, he owed him several million dollars. Like the, the reality of that is it's crazy. You know, uh, being, being willing, if, if you were in that position, if you were the master and someone owed you millions of dollars, you know, the question that, that you should ask yourself is, would I forgive that person? Would I forgive them their debts? You know, I mean, honestly, this is why it's challenging, right? Because you can rationalize things. Like, the reality is, is, man, like, this person, they don't, they don't deserve forgiveness. They owe me this money. Like, I gave them the money. They owe it to me. It's mine and they owe it to me. And so the reality is, is we don't have to forgive people. I mean, you know, um, a lot of times, you know, they, they did us wrong. You know, a lot of times um, it, was, it was their fault, especially if you're a guy. It's always the other person's fault, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've learned that with living with my dad. Um, happy Father's Day. And so, um, <laughs> and so, <laughs> so, uh, but anyways, like, uh, it's really, uh, it's really a challenge. It's really a struggle to be, uh, to be a committed Christian, to be a disciple of Christ. It's, it's not easy. Um, I wish somebody would have kind of warned me ahead of time. Um, though I'm glad they didn't, because maybe if they did warn me, I wouldn't have, uh, I wouldn't be here. I don't know, you know, because there's actually another, um, parable Jesus talks about. Uh, he talks about, um, counting the cost, right? I don't know if, I don't know if Ryan did this one or not. I think he might have, um, where, they, where Jesus talks about building uh, a building and, and knowing, you know, you have to know all the preparations for the building, you know, how much it's going to cost and, and all of this stuff. Because if you start to build something and then you can't finish it, you know, you look like a fool and it's just a waste of space and it's doing no good. And so it's, it's all about counting the cost. And that's what, um, that's what being a disciple 
means, you know, before you, before you hop into becoming a Christian, you know, you really got to count the cost. Like there's, there's going to be a cost to that. You know, yes, God's grace is free. Um, yes, it's a gift, but there's, there's a cost though. Like, like it's, um, there's surrender in it. There's, you know, we have to, we have to now go by, um, you know, be obedient. Um, and a lot of people think that, that obedience is, um, it's like a bad thing or something. You know, they think that it holds, it holds people down like it makes you captive. But really, Jesus wouldn't have given us all these things, right? He gives us all throughout the Bible. He says, do this and don't do that. He says, love your neighbor. Um, he says, forgive. He says all these things. And everything he says, he says for a reason. He says because he wants us to be free. See, um, really, the, all the Jesus commandments, they, they lead to freedom. They lead to freedom. A lot of people think that, that it's, that, you know, at least a bondage or something because, oh, well, you're telling me I can't do this now and I can't do that. Well, the reality is, is if you do do that, like if you do sin, because Jesus knows and, and we should know too, that if you do sin, it, it, it puts you, um, you know, under, uh, under the influence of Satan. And, and when you sin, you're now in bondage, right? And so Jesus says to obey because o obedience leads to, to freedom. Faith and obedience leads to freedom. And so today, you know, that's um, really what I want us to, to, to change our mindsets to. You know, if we can begin to forgive people out of the own, out of the own forgiveness that, that God's shown to us, you know. Like I said, uh, you know, I wouldn't be here today um, if, if God hadn't shown me forgiveness. Um, in fact, I wouldn't be here today if, if a lot of of my friends hadn't shown me forgiveness. A lot of my family members hadn't shown me forgiveness. Forgiveness has power. There's power in forgiveness. Um, you know, I had a, I have a best friend. I've been best friends with him for, for, I don't know, since second grade probably. And, um, you know, I did some really stupid things, uh, back in, back in high school and, and, um, I did him wrong and I did some other people wrong. And, and he had every right to, to leave me. You know, I had, I had, I had a, um, a few friends, you know, I had a few friends in high school and uh, a few best friends. Uh, but every single one of those best friends, when they found out the things I was doing, they never talked to me again. You know, they gave me the cold shoulder. They, um, I never heard from my, I, I never, I never do talk to them anymore, except my one friend. And, and that one friend was the friend that showed me forgiveness. And, uh, he's my best friend today. And, um, you know, every, every day I talk to him, it's just the representation of God's grace in my life. You know, he, I don't, I don't know if he realizes that, but, but he showed God's grace to me in, in, in his forgiveness and his relationship. Um, and the good news is, is that we can do that to other people too. Amen. We can do that to other people too. We can be those people that, that shine, um, that are shining lights, that they give grace, they give forgiveness to other people, that we, we can actually be those people that, that can lead people to Jesus by the way that we act, by, the, by our attitudes, by our actions, by our influence. We can, we can literally impact people for heaven, for, uh, to lead them to Jesus by, uh, by us showing them grace. And so that's really what, uh, what this parable is all about. That's really what Jesus is saying. Um, he's saying, you know, we've got to begin to forgive as if our forgiveness depended, depends on it. We have to be uh, willing to show grace because uh, we, we haven't just been given grace, like I said, to, to be free ourselves, but we've been given grace so that we can give grace to others so that others can be free, so that others can see um, what it's like to be forgiven. And so, um, you know, I just want to pray real quick for, um, for us to just be people that God can use uh, to, to show forgiveness in other people's lives. Father, we just uh, thank you, Lord. God, right now, we thank you, Lord, for, uh, for working in our lives. Holy Spirit, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for your word. God, we know that in your word is power, Lord. There's power in your word. And Father, we just pray right now, God, for a forgiving spirit, Lord. God, we pray as people that we would be forgiving people, Lord, that, that we would not hold grudges, God, that we would not um, rationalize things, that we that we would truly forgive like you have forgiven us. God, we pray that you would uh, help us in every area, Lord, in our uh, family relationships, God. Lord, we know that there's, there's some sticky situations, Lord. There's some, uh, there's some tough stuff in our family relationships, Lord, where people have done us wrong, where 
uh, we, we have every right to, to hold a grudge against them for the wrongs that they've done to us. But God, your, your word says that, that we should forgive others uh, of the wrongs they've done to us. And so Holy Spirit, we pray that you would strengthen us right now. You would empower us to forgive other people, Lord, other people in our families, other people that are our friends or, or that are coworkers or uh, people that we come in contact with. Every person that we know, God, we pray that we would be a living light to show forgiveness and grace to them. Holy Spirit, we thank you for this moment. God, we just thank you for uh, strengthening us, strengthening your people, and God, making us grace-filled people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, so, tonight, uh, tonight is really all about, uh, it's really all about grace. It's about forgiveness. Um, how many love grace and forgiveness? <laughs> we all love grace and forgiveness, right? Some people, they, uh, they don't see that side of Christianity. Um, they don't see that side of Christianity, but, but you know, like I was saying tonight, we can show people that side of Christianity by the way that we live with our own, our own, our own personal lives. We can, um, we can be that light uh, in the darkness. We can be the, the grace for people. Um, I believe that, that we've been called to be like Jesus, and so um, it's a high calling. You know, it's a high calling to be a disciple. Um, there's a lot involved with it. Uh, but I think some of the most important things are, or the most important thing is just being obedient to, to Jesus and to his word. Um, and it's hard to be obedient uh, to Jesus and his word if we don't know his word, right? And so, um, you know, tonight I would just encourage you to really dig deeper into the word. I know we all have different ways we read the Bible, different times we read the Bible, um, but I'm just encouraging all of us, myself included, to give more time to God. I believe, I believe if we just give, I just want to be real specific, 15 extra minutes to, to, to God every day um, in our, you know, studies. If, if you do study, if you don't, um, then begin to study, you know, the Bible. Um, begin to pray. Begin to create that relationship. There's a girl that, that I like, and... Um, I, I've never told her that I liked her, and I, I've ne I don't really talk to her too much. And so the, the reality of me having a relationship with her is impossible, right? I mean, I don't talk to her. I don't communicate with her. You know, she doesn't know that I like her. Um, we might talk occasionally, but the, the reality of, of us ever dating, of us ever getting married, you know, it's never going to happen because we don't communicate with each other. And so in the same way, as, that's, that's, that's how it is with God, you know. That's how it is with, with Jesus. And, and the way we communicate with God, we know, is through the Word. That's how He communicates to us. Um, and, and through prayer is how we can communicate to Him. And so those are two things tonight that I would encourage you to do. Fifteen extra minutes, you know, in your, in your schedule. Whatever that looks like for you, I, I don't know. For me, um, that looks like uh, I, I do it in the morning. So that looks like just 15 extra minutes in the morning, waking up 15 extra minutes earlier, however, however earlier you have to wake up or stay up late or, you know, carve time. Um, or, you, or you don't have to do it all at once either. You know, you could do it in the morning and then do it in the whenever, whatever works for you, man. I mean, there's no secret to it. Um, if there was, I'd let you know. <laughs> they do say the morning, though. They do say early morning uh, really does uh, make a difference to start your day off right. And so, um, anyways, tonight, that's, that's really uh, all we've got, I've all, all I've got for you. Um, but uh, we got about, like, I think 10 more minutes. Um, if you guys just want to hang out, and we can talk and stuff like that. And uh, just, um, you know, be the church. Sound cool? All right, I'll just pray with you guys. Father, thank you for today. God, thank you for uh, your word, Lord. We know that 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 there's no one and there's no thing that's greater than your word, that nothing surpasses you and who you are, Father. So we thank you, God, for showing us who you are, God. We thank you for uh, showing us your word tonight. God, I pray that the things we've heard, the things that we've spoken, that they would stick uh, with us forever, Lord, that, that we would be forgiving people, graceful people, uh, that we've been given grace to give grace. And Father, we thank you for that, Lord. We just ask, Holy Spirit, you be with us, Lord. We thank you for all the fathers um, in our lives. 
uh, we thank you, God, for um, all of the, uh, the relationships that we've been given, Lord, people that have helped us grow. Um, and we just pray you would bless those people, Lord. And uh, God, I pray especially, Lord, for those people today that, um, that might not have a, a good relationship with their father, they may not have a father at all, it might be a weird situation. God, I pray that you, the Heavenly Father, the, the Father, the perfect Father, that you would give, that you give uh, perfect gifts. Lord, I pray that you would give that perfect gift of grace, uh, God, to the, those people in those situations uh, with those relationships. And God, I pray that you would uh, really show them who you are, God, because we know that when we're looking at a father, uh, there is no perfect father except you. And God, we know that uh, fatherhood comes from you, that you're the father of lights, your word says, you're the father in heaven. And so God, we just pray that you would be that father to each and every single one of us and that we would obey you, that we would love you and we would cherish our relationship with you. In Jesus name, amen. We hope you enjoyed this week's video podcast. To attend one of our actual services, please visit our website for service times and location. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Please return for next week's video podcast.